Hello everyone, welcome back to Fleaway Gaming. This is Flea for your live speaking, and my partner in crime, looking to commit some crime over there is... Karina. Yeah, you know, she's dressed in the brand new, uh, what is that, the Ninja Shark hoodie? Uh, yeah, the Ninja hoodie with the uh, State of Decay logo. That's right. And all that is part of the new anniversary, the second year anniversary, if you can believe it. I can't. It just goes by so quick. I'm sure the developers can because they work on it constantly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's the second anniversary of State of Decay 2, and they've released a bunch of good stuff, some goodies for all of us players uh, in celebration of the second anniversary, and you're looking at a couple of them. As I already mentioned, her uh, ninja hoodie with the State of Decay logo, and you're looking at the character on the left, which is mine. She's got the, the new sequins blinking light cowboy hat. I believe the formal name is the undead green cattleman hat uh it comes free if you, as long as you log in between may 19th 2020 and june 18th 2020 so you can see it uh blinks and it's just goofy and makes you more visible at night so yay <laughs> <laughs> She's oh, also, it's nifty. Oh, I know. <laughs> I kind of like it. I ain't gonna lie. Anyway, you can see she's got the... Uh, what is that called? The... Red Talon Bomber Jacket. Uh, you get this through the bounty dispenser guy. What is what is he even called? I don't even remember. Bounty Broker? The Bounty Broker. God, I can never get that right. The Bounty Broker. You gotta do some challenges and it'll unlock and it costs a certain amount of influence uh you get your first one free well since it's an outfit you always get it free but like the weapons and stuff you have to do a challenge and then you get the first one free and it costs a certain amount of influence to get them in the future until they retire the pack so anyway let's take a closer look so you can get a good idea of what it looks like yeah it's got the red talon patches the uh nothing on the back as I rotate the character model. Got a state of decay patch, two patches. Uh I'm not sure what that is. I gotta zoom in closer, skull crossbones, patch kind of looking thing. Uh you know, not a bad looking jacket, so cool beans. They also have some other outfits, a sand shark hoodie. Uh, the patch notes reads, last seen on a unique survivor in the Breakdown DLC for the original State of Decay. This iconic outfit is now available for any of your community members to wear because it's already waiting in your closet. They have a brown logo combat tee. Uh, not everybody can pull off the t-shirt with combat pants, pants look, but you're special. Good news, this outfit is free to all players, so go check your closet now. Um... Uh, there's a yeah, the that's the one. Right here. Nice one. And uh, yeah, he pulls it off. Look at that. Let me rotate. Look at those arms. <laughs> yeah, where's you get all this protein in the apocalypse? But mystery meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got the boots, the combat pants with some holsters strapped to his leg. I don't know if there's anything on the back. I don't know why they put anything on the back of these t-shirts. Because your backpacks always cover them up anyway. So it defeats the purpose. But that's just this man's opinion. Your mileage may vary. The shark hoodie? Sand shark hoodie. Yep. There we go. There it is. It's got, that's a goofy looking thing. Yeah, it's got the <laughs> googly eyed looking eyeballs on the skull. A weird mouth but your guns are out so buy your tickets to the gun show indeed now i'm sure you've been wondering about this truck this is the trumbull 4x4 uh 
You get it through the bounty broker. He gives a bounty. Now, I do remember what you have to do to this because it was a pain in the rear end. You have to run over 25 freaks. And uh, in my experience, whenever I ran over a bloater, it did not count. So I was limited to try to running down ferals and uh, screamers. And it took me a while, but I think the truck is worth it. Yeah. I like the paint job. Yeah, it looks like an alien splooged all over it and didn't wipe it up. I just got the nifty logo. Yeah, it's got a, the State of Decay 2 logo painted on the hood and a, like a silver or pearlescent silver. I don't know. I'm not good with colors. But who cares? It looks nice. Let's see how it drives. So it is a 4x4. It's more of an off-road utility vehicle. Um, it's glued to the ground. It handles off-road very well. It doesn't really want to roll all that much when you're going over obstacles awkwardly. If I could find some obstacles to go over awkwardly and move on camera. It's a little front heavy, so when you go off a ramp, the front is going to sink like it's got concrete shoes on. Um, but other than that, it's very glued to the ground. It's not the fastest vehicle, so if you're looking to break land speed records, you're going to be disappointed. And it's got four doors. Yeah, four doors, so you can see her get in the back seat. <laughs> Me in the back. <laughs> and now I am a chauffeur. But So if you're looking for an off-road vehicle <laughs> to carry around passengers for a mission, that's where this thing's going to shine. Um, durability. I haven't been able to break it yet, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to break it. I just I haven't had it uh, long enough to do serious damage to it. But durability-wise, it seems to be on par with... Uh, the other vehicles you cannot and I emphasize cannot upgrade this thing with an upgrade vehicle kit so what you see is what you get well it seems it's uh, sure footedness came at a cost to the other vehicles in the game that's true um, yeah those are all now a little bit more uh, early on the road whereas this one is uh, pretty stable yeah, I don't know if they're trying to change how the vehicles handle. It might have just been an error or an oversight. But uh, when this thing takes off, you know, there's the rear end does not kick out. Fish, it doesn't fish tail. It's just uh, like it just goes forward, right? Like it, like it, it's got really awesome grip. What I don't know is if you can ride in the back. Like some trucks, you can end up riding in the back, like the, in the bed of the pickup. Well, let's stop here and I'll pop out and see. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Yep. Well, look at that. Totally ride in the back. So I'm guessing the maximum capacity of this vehicle is going to be six passengers, including the driver. So the storage space is equivalent to the other trucks and the upgraded Jeep. All in all, uh, it's not going to break the game as far as balance between the vehicles goes. Everybody's going to use what they like. Uh, but if you're looking for a nice alternative to an off-road, for an off-road vehicle with decent storage, uh, I'd say average durability, average fuel capacity, average fuel consumption. Uh, and this, a little on the slow side. Yeah, it's a little on the slow side, but where it makes up for its lack of speed is its utility. Well, it's just nice to have a, uh, a, a vehicle with like a, a higher um, ground wheelbase. Clearance. Yeah, ground clearance. Um, so that you can take it off road and still have like you know a couple of friends with you and still enough room for mission uh npcs 
and you know it's uh, I think it's a pretty good addition. Uh, the, the nice thing about this uh, truck is it gets delivered to your base when you get it from the bounty broker. It doesn't you don't have to worry about uh, somehow getting a car there and back with the truck. You don't it'll just be at your base waiting for you so that's a plus. Did you have to have a parking spot open for it? No. Okay. Oh, it'll put it somewhere in front of your base and you'll see the icon. Uh, it'll be like a drop box with the parachute. You'll see it at your base. It'll be there waiting for you, so fret not. So, the other things that came out with the, uh, with the anniversary edition, uh, three of them are heavy weapons. So, there it is, the industrial wrench. Uh, you can kind of see it there. It's in f behind my operator's M4. And that is a big wrench. <laughs> That's a very big wrench. <laughs> Oof. So let's see it in action. Here's our first victim. Not dead yet. So that is the pipe wrench. Uh, unfortunately, I am in a game where I just haven't found the other two heavy weapons yet. So... We look a little unprofessional, but we apologize in advance. All right, and we're back. So the next weapon we're going to be taking a look at that's offered from the Bounty Broker is the uh, Heirloom Conda. It's a uh, it's a bladed weapon. It weighs three pounds. Uh, let's see. It scores pretty high on speed, quietness, ease of use, where it's lacking... In my opinion is durability i wish it was just more durable so there it is you can see it's got like a well it's kind of hard to see it just looks pretty lethal it's got like the oh what is that called on serrated edge that's the word i was looking for it's got serrated edge there on one side of the blade and the other blade looks very sharp the other side of the blade i mean so, uh, let's uh, go cut up this horde and see it slice and dice. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. Yeah, so as you can see, it uh, slices and dices with the best of them. So, pretty effective weapon. I uh, just wish the durability was higher. Yeah. <laughs> so, the next weapon we're going to take a look at is the Ancestral Tawar. Tawar. So, right now you're seeing it compared to the Heirloom Conda, which is the other sword offered by the uh, Bounty Broker. And you can see that it's lacking even worse in durability and knockdown. Equal quietness. It's a bit better ease of use, very high uh, score on the lethality there, and dismemberment. It uh, doesn't have as much impact, but the speed is equal. And it is a lighter sword, it weighs 2.5 pounds, as opposed to the heirlooms 3 pounds, which if you're worried about your travel weight, uh, probably the Talwar would be beneficial in that regard. So, sorry about the time of day we're filming it. Can't really help that. Get a you know, good light there. As you see, it's a curved blade with an ornate handle. And it is a very quick weapon. Slices and dices like the heirloom, I'm sure. Except this time we don't have a horde of zombies willing to sacrifice themselves for our viewing pleasure. So we're going to have to run around and find a guy to slice and dice. So yeah, pretty good sword. Uh, I just wish it had more durability. Uh, this weapon's going to break pretty fast, but while it's operational, you're going to be killing a lot of things with it. Uh, the speed and ease of use and the lethality it's just it's a great package 
So anyway, uh, let's uh, let's take a look at some of the new guns, shall we? So there, we're taking a peek at the Safari Razorback 44 caliber. It's a revolver, very lightweight, 2.5 pounds, so it weighs as much as a sword. In a dense little package, as you can see, it scores very high on the power. It's pretty accurate for a handgun. Uh, control is a little bit lacking, but again, we're comparing it to the RTX Stormbringer. But uh, it scores very high on durability, obviously, because revolvers are uh, they don't jam or break in this game, so you don't have to worry about spending parts to repair. Fire rate's pretty good for a revolver. That's compared to an automatic weapon. The range is pretty impressive. And uh, the quietness, you're not going to get this in quiet because you cannot attach silencers to revolvers for some reason in this game. It fires the 44 Magnum high powered rounds. It's got a round capacity of 6. So let's equip it and let's see what it looks like. It's got the sighted zoom. You can zoom in quite a bit with this gun. So you can really take them out at range. So it's uh, got the professional brake attached to it. So let's squeeze off the rounds with these guys and see what it does. Time to reload. Pretty quick reload for a revolver, so that's handy. Oops. Um, next weapon we're going to take a look at is the F-45 Tactical. Uh, it's classified as a pistol. It's a bit heavier than a revolver, coming in at 3.5 pounds. As you can see, the power is uh, not as high as a revolver. The accuracy is very similar. It's got a little bit less control. The durability this weapon will break, but it still scores pretty high in those regards. The fire rate is very high. Um, doesn't really compare all that well in range, but that doesn't say that this weapon doesn't have any range, as you can see from the score. Its quietness is the same, but the difference between this gun and the revolver is that you can actually attach a silencer to it. Okay, so we took the silencer off the Stormbringer here. We're going to squeeze off a few rounds of the F-45 Tactical without, and then we'll fire a few rounds with the silencer attached. Okay, so there you can see we got a helmeted guy. Let's see how many shots it takes to get that helmet off. So it took about half the magazine to bring him down. Minus a few misses, so I'd say about five or six shots. You know, it's got the sighted zoom, so you can take out targets at range. Looks pretty cool with a silencer attached. So all in all, not a bad pistol. Now the final weapon that we're going to be taking a look at in this video is the AKS-74U Valentine. It's a uh, assault weapon, weighs 8.5 pounds, it fires a 5.56mm round with a capacity of 45, 46 total with one in the chamber. So you can see we're comparing it to the Operator's M4A1, which is what this chick comes equipped with in my game. And uh, you can see it's 1.5 pounds lighter uh, than the Operator's M4A1. This gun weighs 8.5. Uh, statistically, it compares pretty well to that Operator's M4A1. Uh, the, it's got a little slower fire rate, a little less range, and a little bit less durability and accuracy. But other than that, they are pretty much identical. Quietness, control, power. Um, obviously, the 46 round capacity is pretty good for a gun that you can just get from uh, from the bounty board. So let, let me try to get some light here. Anyway, so you can see it's got a unique design. Uh, the butt of the rifle stock is a heart. It's got hearts everywhere on it. <laughs> oh, I like that. 
It's I mean, pink and white, so really unique color scheme. Uh, let's see. It comes with the sided zoom, so you can take uh, targets out at a pretty good range. Let's squeeze off a few rounds without a silencer, and we'll see how it sounds. shoots in um it's got two firing modes single and full auto these stations are getting out of hand Time to fix that so with the silencer attached you get a little bit more control but it definitely has a unique sound All in all, not a bad weapon, at least in my opinion. I think it's pretty. There you go. She thinks it's pretty, <laughs> so that's all you need to know. That's right. So here we are we're at the bounty broker. So at, naturally, when you complete these bounties, you get the first one free. But here you can see the price chart for future purchases. Uh, Be careful going about this one. Yep, the bladed weapons cost 300 influence apiece. The industrial wrench is 525. So you can see here the F-35 comes in at 300 influence. The revolver comes in at 950. The anniversary cake oven is 1,000. The Trumbull 4x4 is 1,000. And the AKS-74U Valentine comes in at 950. Alrighty, the last thing we're going to cover tonight is the anniversary cake oven mod. Uh, it basically allows you to build these explosive anniversary cakes um i don't know what all facilities you can install it in here i just have it installed in my trade depot uh just because reasons anyway as you can see uh each time you craft one you get two anniversary cakes loving we prepare a special anniversary cake designed to draw zombies from afar and why to their fiery doom not recommended for human consumption pathology skills will reduce the number of plague samples required cooking and chemistry skills together will improve our yields so you need three plague samples uh, probably base I'm guessing is five uh, from my group I have guys set in uh, chemistry and cooking so it's obviously reducing the cost uh, but it still costs one ammo, one food, one fuel, and one labor to produce. So let's get it started. And we're lucky there's a horde just up the street. Absolutely. So let's grab a few of these and let's blow them up. See a lot of zombies in. So I'm going to set one down. Right. I'm going to run like a bitch. We got too close. It's drawing them in from all over the place. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that's quite a huge number. Rumor over there. <laughs> oh yep. dear. Draw them into yep. the fire. <laughs> Draw them into the fire. <laughs> so you can see the fire is giving off uh, pink or purple smoke, so that's kind of neat. Gonna need to lay down another. Yes, please. <laughs> so you can see when it detonate, it kind of has like a cluster charge effect. Uh, it sets off explosions, little fire bombs. It's a pretty wide area of effect. This makes an excellent trap for zombies. And it does last a good long while. Yes, it does. Oh, wait. There's a bloater. Oh, this will be good. Hold on. Bloater with explosives. There we go. Got one. 
Oh, you're working on your bounties. Okay. Yeah. If you look on the mini map, you can see that it does draw them in from quite a distance. I mean, that's a large uh, pinging yeah. effect. Wow. Well, I got one more, so we'll give it a shot. Yes, please. <laughs> As you can see, fire is really effective on these zombies. Uh, the only zombies that it really doesn't particularly work very well on are the armored and juggernauts. Yeah, that is a really good long burn time. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. <laughs> and they're still coming in. <laughs> yeah, they're still coming in. So we'll clean this mess up, and we'll be back at you with the power of editing and we'll give you our closing thoughts. So, uh, closing thoughts, um, the anniversary cake oven, kind of neat, a uh, little niche, but, uh, <laughs> it does, put, it did put a smile on my face, so I guess I kind of like it, uh, I wouldn't call it exactly practical, but, you know, if you want to just have some fun with some toys, it's there for you, so I'm thankful for that. I do love the Trumbull 4x4, uh, the bomber jacket and the clothes. Uh, sure they're new now and I'll probably forget about them here in a couple hours uh, the new weapons aren't all that exciting uh, minus the two that I wasn't able to procure the I'm sorry the yeah the brick hammer and the beetle mallet uh, but again this is one man's opinion I'm not a big fan of the heavy weapons but if uh, you're looking for a review on those, uh, sorry we couldn't help you. The other, uh, the two now, the two swords, uh, I thought they're they're decent weapons, just lacking in durability. Otherwise, they probably would break the balance of the game. I I probably wouldn't use anything else. But since they do lack the durability, you know, I I don't know if I'm going to be using them or not. Again, you could make an argument that, well, since you're never far from an outpost or, you know, you're, you're always going back to base after you, you get a full inventory of loot, that you can just repair them there. And that's a good point. Uh, for, that's probably how it'll go down. But uh, if you don't have any other good, decent weapons, I would say, yeah, go to the bounty board and buy them because... They're pretty good. They're very lethal, and they will help you out in a pinch. I tend to agree with your assessment. Um, I haven't tried the weapons, obviously, because I have not done the bounties myself. But I do like the look of that Valentine, and I can't wait to try that out. And the truck felt great. It was a little slow, but it was sturdy. And again, can't beat that room. So I think it's definitely something worth going after. Yeah, and um, I'm not much of a, uh, I don't like playing Barbie too often, so the clothing's nice, it's, it's cute, but yeah, it'll it's just a passing fad. <laughs> Indeed. So those are our thoughts and impressions of the second year anniversary, new equipment. I can't believe this game's been out for two years. Uh, we, we step away for a couple months at a time, but we come back to it. It's a great well, co-op game. Yeah, they're, it's always a different challenge, it seems. So it's it's worth, you know, starting a brand new colony and just, you know, building and, uh, you know, discovering all these great weapons and gadgets and everything and putting them into use. And it's always a lot of fun. Couldn't agree more. 
anyway, thanks for watching everybody. And uh, if you check down in the uh, description below, you'll find all of our social media links. Uh, please join us. Uh, tell us what you think of the game. Tell us what you think of this update. It's update 17, anniversary edition. You can drop it down in the comments or visit us on Twitter or anywhere else. Um, um, if you wanted to read those update notes yourself, um, they are, of course, available online on um, the, the website, First State of Decay. Um, we also did uh, actually do a read through of them on our last live stream, which uh, is available on YouTube on our channel. Just go take a look and uh, you can have them read to you if you would prefer. Um, thanks to our Patreon supporter. Um, it's with that help that we're able to create better videos and post frequently. And uh, remember to drop in. Uh, we do post every day, plus we have live streams Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday in the evening, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we announce those on Twitter and Discord. So um, sign on up and be in the know. Hell yeah. <laughs> but thanks so much again. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.